job perks I'm just gonna put your book out for people who don't know and at the strand it's nine dollars right now it's out of print but it's a worth <laughs> worthwhile book <laughs> you can still get it it's a phenomenal book um, I you, one of your perks this is why you can't just survive as a writer this is why you got a day job that has you I know, can't focus health on insurance. anything other than okay. the fact okay. that okay. it I'm is out of print that. I'm sorry about that um, so one of one of your um, Perks, your job perks, is that uh, you get to live in the Waldorf Astoria. And I was curious if you uh, hoard the uh, shampoos, the mini bottle shampoos. Well, it took me some adjusting to when I first got there that my husband and I were sleeping under John Bolton's sheets. Oh my God. <laughs> and Madeline Albright, and like. <laughs> Probably Warren Harding's. I mean, it, it's. Uh, Does it, it has still been... smell like that? No, was no, there... no. But it is. It is just. It's a, a State Department institution, and the people who pass through kind of inherit it, and they make it their own a little bit. But it is what it is. It's not. It's fully furnished by the State Department. Oh wait, so you don't have mini fridges? Uh, mini fridges, no. But but yeah, sh Waldorf shampoo bottles, yes. You do. Yes. I had, well, that's good, because now you have kids, and I would fear that they would eat the $19, you know, Snickers bar, and then you'd have to run out to the bodega and replace it. They, they're, we tried room service when we first got there, and it was like a $50 burger. <laughs> so Yelp became our go-to. You hold three jobs simultaneously, as I understand it. You're a member of Obama's cabinet, you're the ambassador to the UN, and you're part of the Security Council within the UN. Have you ever thought about switching and going to the GOP? Because you, you don't even have to do one job there. Where does one go with that? I, I, uh, <laughs> I love my jobs. <laughs> I'm also the mother of a six and a three year old that's yes. like negotiating with the Russians. So <laughs> like it's all the same wherever I go. Is there ever a time where, just looking back on matters you've been working on where you wish that your opinion could have been heard more? Do you have any examples of, of where you sort of did what your boss wanted to do, but you would have done it differently? Yes, and I'm here to talk about all of those tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the nick of time. <laughs> to join the GOP ranks of the unemployed. I don't always agree that we should have diplomatic immunity. Um, one of the things I was thinking about, I mean, there's obviously cholera and sexual assault issues, but I was also thinking about the parking tickets. Uh, this is from uh, a couple of years ago, but Egypt, they are, they are, the diplomats are not paying their uh, parking tickets. I have a lot on my plate, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's terrible. This, this is a real issue that you put your finger on. We now have a, a, almost a pandemic of... <laughs> uh oh okay a pandemic of peacekeepers not behaving uh internationally yeah. abroad and th th the same thing they have immunity they're there but people are counting on them to protect the vulnerable and instead yeah. they're pillaging and indeed raping so part of what we are trying to work through now is how if a country isn't going to prosecute his own soldiers or police for doing things abroad is there a way to deal with this issue of immunity so that we don't just preach accountability, but the people we send supposedly to be of use to protect people themselves are, are held accountable? So you actually put your finger on a very, a very important issue. Thank you very much. Um, How do you deal with um, LGBT issues abroad where something may be acceptable here but not abroad and, and not putting people in danger? One of the reasons I gra gravitated toward President Obama is that he's and this may also lose the audience, but he's a consequentialist. He's, you know, knows what our values are, what we want to stand for, but is always, always asking us to ask the question of, will this actually make things better or worse? Now, sometimes uh, you have imperfect information, you can't predict it, and that can be an excuse to do nothing. Uh, but by and large, what we do is we defer to individuals in countries like Uganda or Saudi Arabia and ask, you know, will it help for us to go public or to do something privately? Would it help for us to pull back assistance uh, or to threaten to suspend a military exercise, you know, in order to elevate this issue with your government, to get something decriminalized or to get, you know, just couples out of jail simply for being same-sex couples? And we take our cue from the individuals and their families as best we can. 
How, when managing so many people, both upwards and downwards, how do you find, I mean, I, just listening to the th sort of three jobs that you have, how do you find time to, and including, you know, taking care of young children, when do you find time to sort of think, you know, and, and just be on your own? Um, that is hugely challenging. I mean, particularly the kids, because, uh, not that my kids are particularly challenging, but that <laughs> when one, they may be, but when one comes home, that would be the time that one would decompress and actually develop a more affirmative uh, kind of forward-looking agenda so you're not just living the tyranny of the inbox, which in, yeah. in my job is, is very significant. But then there's a child that comes barreling you over and you know, says, why is it always Putin, 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 Putin? You know, <laughs> which I get a lot. <laughs> it is so easy for the urgent to, to crowd out the important. And it, you know, particularly the kinds of investments we're trying to make where President Obama will hand the baton uh, you know, to somebody with uh, like the LGBTI example, the sexual abuse example. We're trying to change the systems yeah. so that they outlive and outlast us. And I know that um, you know, after calling Hillary Clinton a monster, you guys have not only buried the hatchet, you guys ha have worked together many times, and um, I know you, you may not be able to answer this question, but I just wanted to share, um, because I'm struggling, um, trying to figure out if I uh, vote for the monster I know or the monster I don't. <laughs> and I was just curious um, which direction you might be heading in. <laughs> I, no comment. I, I don't. Uh, we national security professionals, we stay removed from the thicket of uh, political warfare that is underway. I was wondering if we could show off one of um, your less wonky talents. Um, I heard that you're a pretty good dancer. I, yeah. I had nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, showtime, showtime, showtime. Give a round of applause for showtime. Dr. Oh, God. Uh oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look out, look out. Go power, go power, go power, go power. Go and pass it up, go and pass it up, go and pass it up, go and pass it up. Never hear you say you can. 